Hello everyone, Carlos here. So today's video is about two vulnerabilities that have been announced recently. I'm recording this on January 16th. These two vulnerabilities were announced on January 10. Ivanti, the creators of Pulse VPN, uh, announced uh, via KB article, two vulnerabilities, CVE 2023, 46805, and CVE 2024, 21887. These two vulnerabilities are a authentication bypass and a remote command injection vulnerability. Now, these are big because they're being chained together to then gain access to the device itself, modifying the device for credential collection by modifying an existing JavaScript component. In addition to that, one of the things they're doing is they're putting in a web shell so they can then have access to uh, the device itself and run other commands. Some of these other commands is actually installation of a more complex backdoor that allow tunneling into the target network. Now, the actor that has been doing this is considered to be a Chinese APT. Uh, so far, Mandiant has also seen exploitation of this, and it's believed that it was initially being used for espionage. As soon as the information came out, uh, one of the things that happened, sadly, was that we started seeing mass exploitation yesterday, Monday, on January 15, out there in the web. And we also saw an article came out today, this morning, that goes over the vulnerability itself and how it can be exploited. So we're going to start seeing mass exploitation of this vulnerability out there if you have not patched or taken mitigations. And the reason that I say if you have patched or taken mitigations is that Ivanti is actually staggering the updates that address this specific vulnerability. Some of updates are going to be coming out mid-January. The other ones are going to be coming at the end or mid-February. So this means that you have a window with a known vulnerability out there with a piece proof of concept code that is going to be used to exploit massively. That gains you access to a device where credentials are processed and also serves as a gateway into your network. Uh, one of the things that we saw in the great bright of from Veloxity is that this vulnerability, once it is employed, the evidence is in the locks on the device itself. In addition to that, it is being used to then perform SSH attacks via tunneling to other devices in the network. They're leveraging RDP to connect to internal devices. We're seeing SMB traffic because one of the backdoors actually provides them with tunneling capabilities. All of these tasks, SMB enumeration, RDP connections, SSH connections, we're seeing them connect to web shells that they've placed on other places in, on the internal network. All of this traffic stuff that we can see in the logs. Not only can we see this in the logs, but the way that Velocity was actually able to track and detect some of this behavior was by looking at weird connections coming out of those devices to other places. So have you done a baseline of the connection of your perimeter devices? Is it normal for those connections? In fact, are you collecting logs for those? And, and I mentioned this because Many times we go through the exercises of doing purple team engagements. Uh, our IR team does threat hunting. And one of the things that we see is that those areas of network equipment are not being addressed. This is one of the areas that I recommend that you address as quickly as possible, that you have a very good plan where you're collecting logs on files modified, log into devices. If you can track for connections, uh, track normal connections across all of those and build a baseline of what is normal for that device specifically, and you should be able to capture outliers. And I say this because this is something that we're going to be seeing a lot more. In 2023, we saw a lot of vulnerabilities actually impact gateway devices, VDI solutions, in addition to VPN devices, uh, and mass exploitation came very quickly. And the only way that a customer could know, have I been a victim or not of this type of attack, is via logs, via going in and checking, do I have logs that show that the attack actually happened? If not, then you have to engage into an incident response engagement where somebody has to go in and start looking for IOCs present on the device and in other assets in your environment to see if you have been a victim. And many times people go like, oh no, if attacker only needs to win once to be a, uh, have success. And it's not true. 
actually you control many aspects of what that attacker can do in your environment and you can actually have early detections in your environment set up if because you control that battle space you control their tempo, how fast can they move in that environment? Because depending on how well you've configured your logs and other mit mitigations, you will be able to control how fast they should be moving there if they have done proper situational awareness as they gain access. In addition to that, you control what type of tooling they can use because depending on the type of detections that you have and countermeasures and endpoint protection software and other security solutions, they are going to have to choose what tools can they use and you're limiting their tool set. So you do have some say, so you do have some control. Now, this was not the only vulnerability that I wanted to cover in the video. There was another vulnerability that came out today that was announced. This is for Atlassian Confluence. This vulnerability is CVE 2023-22527. Now, this vulnerability has a CVSS score of 10 which is the highest CVSS score there is. And they're saying like, there's no mitigations, do patch. So here we have another example of a perimeter device that provides services where, how do you address it other than patching? Well, you can start monitoring for IOCs to see if this specific web server is being attacked or not. Are you collecting logs from your Confluence web server? Many of them run Linux. And I have to tell you, many times when we do engagements, my red team, they like moving over to the Linux servers because many times they're not monitored. Same thing for IoT devices, same thing for networking devices. So I do recommend that you perform some purple team type of engagement where you're looking at your data sources that you're collecting and look for gaps. If you're afraid that you have been a victim of one of these attacks, our IR team can help you to look for this. In addition to that, if you want to learn and go through the exercise of performing a threat hunt, we can also help you there. So you can start looking for specific IOCs and learn how to automate this entire process because we are starting to see a lot more zero days being used out there in the wild. And it's good for you to actually prepare for this type of attack. This is something that many times you cannot simulate in a red team engagement or a pen test, but you can tabletop exercise it. You can do threat hunt engagement. You can do purple team engagements to make sure that you're covering all of these data sources and you're collecting all of that information so you can react a lot quicker for when this type of event actually happens. Again. I hope that you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one.